In Jesus' name, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship as we wind out our Easter season, uh, turning next week to Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Among the announcements, as always, check the weekly Piper for ongoing and upcoming ministries. Special thanks to all those who helped this past week with the yard sale. Special thanks to Sue Ellen and Jerry Krupa, who co-chaired with Roger and Sue Glad. Uh, it was a busy and long week. There's some very tired people. <clears throat> some of us among you today. My allergies are terrible, sorry. <clears throat> um, we made almost as much as we did at the last yard sale it was in 2019 before the pandemic, just $350 short of that year. So thank you to all the generous donors who gave and supported our yard sale. Uh, those funds will go to Interfaith Human Services, Park Forest Day Nursery, and I think one other. Uh, the youth made $275 at the food booth, and that money will go to the Youth Service Bureau. So thank you all for a wonderful uh, week. Uh, later uh, this morning, we'll celebrate with two of our younger disciples, um, Sophia Card and Bryce Wenrick will both make public affirmation of their faith, and so we'll celebrate with them at the later service. As we did last night with Aidan Hunt, he made public profession of his faith last evening. So we ask God's blessing upon them as they make this transition in, in their adult faith. With those announcements, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude.
invite those who are able to please stand. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given you birth, by whose speaking we are given you life. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Almighty God, we confess that we do not always live as resurrected people. We live with You hear this again and again, but you need to hear it again and again. God loves you. There is no border you can cross, no boundary that can be made that will limit God's love for you. Live with the fullness of God's love, grace, and peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever living God, you hold together all things in heaven. Great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children, and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading today is from Acts, the 17th chapter. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown. This I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, 
so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of immortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man who has been appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmody for today is from Psalm 66. Let us recite it responsibly. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us, just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You made heavy burdens upon our heads. You let people ride over the heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house for your offerings. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you for offerings of families with the soul of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I call out to God from my mouth and praise the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me, and has sent me to sound of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor with well unfailing love from me. Our second reading is from the third chapter of 1 Peter. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also, he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal from dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the redemption of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will, seek, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, in communion with the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the most beloved cartoons published in newspapers involves Calvin and Hobbes. One day Calvin and Hobbes come marching into the living room early one morning. Calvin's mother is seated there in her favorite chair. She is sipping her morning coffee. She looks up at young Calvin. She is amused and amazed at how he is dressed. Calvin's head is encased in a large space helmet. A cape is draped around his neck, across his shoulders, down his back, and is dragging on the floor. One hand is holding a flashlight, the other a baseball bat. What's up today? asks his mom. Nothing so far, answers Calvin. So far, she questions. Well, you never know, Calvin says. Something could happen today. Then Calvin marches off and he says, and if anything does, by golly, I'm going to be ready for it. Calvin's mom looks out at the reading audience and says, I need a suit like that. And wouldn't we all agree, we too would like to have a suit like that, given how the world is and all the bad news that we hear and the violence throughout the world. We could all use a suit to protect us. But as we're reminded today, God does not protect us from this world. Rather, he comes to be with us in this world. As Jesus is preparing his disciples and us for his departure, he reminds us that we will not be alone. He's not going to abandon us, or as he says it much more elegantly, I will not leave you orphaned. The Holy Spirit has been poured out on us as we'll celebrate specifically next week, but we gather here in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's that spirit that reveals Jesus to us in a wide variety of ways. As we sing the hymns and the liturgy today, as we hear God's word, as we listen even now, as we greet one another, Christ is present. He has not abandoned us and never will. He doesn't protect us from this world, but joins us on this journey, this adventure we call life. And we can't always point him out, but we know he's always present. And that's what makes the difference in our lives. This, pa this past week was, again, a reminder of me of the, the power of faith in you people of Trinity. 10, 15 hours getting ready, probably more like 20, 25. And across that, a number of people getting ready. And yesterday, starting at 8 a.m., though many of us were here earlier than that, going until three or four in the afternoon till everything was cleaned up and put away, people worked. And if you were to come and see what they were doing, you might find yourself wondering, what's wrong with those people? It was a perfectly beautiful day and they're gonna spend it here doing this? In fact, I talked to Dick Frisk last evening after Saturday night service and he said he actually had a, a customer a man came and said, 
Why do you do this? It would be so much easier to take pictures of everything and sell it online. And Dick tried to assure him that's just not the way we do it around here. We do it this way. Because it's not just the selling of items. It's the celebrating of the benefits our yard sale produces. It's a great place for people who have stuff they want to get rid of. Yes, some of us might call it junk. But other people come shopping and they find it to be a treasure. It benefits them, the, the donors and the buyers, as well as us who get, get, get to interact with them and the various agencies that benefit from the proceeds. I don't know very often that you can get a win, 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 win. Yeah. But that's what the week is all about and what God is all about with us. Jesus gives us his peace, promises to be with us forever, and that's why we gather here this morning. It's why we have these relationships we call the church. God's people gathered to celebrate the gifts of God. And later we'll celebrate in a special way as two of our young disciples take that next next step in their faith journey, publicly professing their affirmation of their own baptism. And once again today, we'll gather around the table to eat and drink, to receive in our hands and on our tongues the body and blood of Christ as a reminder that he has not left us orphaned. From time to time, God calls us to do certain kinds of things. As I was reading one of my sermon help websites, came across an article about a young woman by the name of Maggie. At 17 years old, Maggie graduated from high school. She took what they call today one of those gap years. She wanted to do something significant in the world, and so she took that year to go to Nepal, of all places. She met another young woman who's a a resident of Nepal, and they became fast friends. And the two of them traveled around Nepal so that Maggie could see the country. She said it was an amazing trip. But what was so outstanding was the profound suffering and want and poverty that she experienced in various places around the country. And those who suffered the most were the children, specifically orphans. As she continued her journey, she decided she needed to do something about that situation. So she called home and convinced her parents to send her the $5,000 she had saved for school so she could use it to establish a school for orphans in Nepal. That was, according to the article, that was 20 years ago. And according to the article, she now has 230 students in the school and a faculty of 24. All because she saw a need and wanted to address it. Now, granted, not all of us are called to those kinds of tasks, but God does call of us to certain tasks that we do faithfully and obediently because of the faith we have in Jesus. And others may not understand it, but that doesn't matter. We do it because God loves us and has not left us orphaned. Maggie wanted to show the orphans of Nepal that they too were not orphaned by Jesus, though they may have been by everybody else. Now, after 20 years, and I just have to say this because it's so cool to say, she now speaks fluent Nepalese. As I reflected on that article, it dawned on me. We know Maggie. Believe it or not, we know her. She's been here. At Trinity. For you see, her grandmother was a very active member of our congregation for the last few years of her life. Sheila Merrill is her grandmother. What a small world. And God blesses us to be a blessing. I will not leave you orphaned. And he has not. 
And therefore, we as God's people gather to rejoice and to respond to that gift the best way we can, as each of us does by the power of the living Holy Spirit at work in us and around us. All as a life that gives back to God the best we can give. And so once again, this day, we as God's people rejoice and say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. I was a little worried there for a second. Thanks be to God. Amen. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O God. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O God. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Nurturing God, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone and all who are sick or grieving, especially Jean, Barb, Brenda, Linda, John, Dee, Jerry, Rita, and those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, and anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for the Apostle Matthias and all your saints, especially Sheila Merrill and all our loved ones who rest now in you. Sustain us by your love until we join the saints in glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Please be seated. broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, this is risen, Christ will come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven,
May the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in his love and grace. Amen. raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen.